know if this is the meaning of this, midshipman. Oh, my apologies, sir. I'm looking for Lieutenant Fisher, sir. Do you know him? Yes, indeed I do, because I am him, boy. Oh, excellent. I'm Midshipman Murray. Midshipman Henry Arthur Keith Murray. Well, congratulations, Midshipman Henry Arthur Keith Murray. Do your parents give you enough names? Oh, well, that was a rhetorical question. Now, what is it that you want? Oh, I want to pass my lieutenant's exam, sir. And I was wondering if you would be so kind as to show me how to navigate. Why don't you... Ask one of the other lieutenants to assist you in the matter. Oh, well, I would, sir. Um, it's just that I believe that you passed your lieutenant's exam with top marks. What was it? 963 out of 1,000, earning you the Beaufort testimonial that year. Um, so, technically, you're the most qualified man on board to teach me. Yes, indeed. And I'm also qualified to give you a darn good thrashing for wasting my time, if you don't mind. Oh, and also, well, the captain told me to ask you. Ah, yes, well, that's different, isn't it? Right. <clears throat> Murray, how do you calculate the position of the ship? On a map, sir. It's very good, Murray, but on board a ship it is a chart. So how do you calculate the position of the ship on a chart? Well, I suppose you'd know if you ran into one of these funny lines. And what about that disc with the weird spikes coming off it? I'm sure loads of ships get wrecked on there. They should really come with warning signs. Murray, those are added afterwards to assist you with navigation. Now I'll ask you again. How do you calculate your position on the map? Chart, sir. Yes, all right, Murray, the chart. Now, I asked you, do you know how to do it? And I do not believe that you do. So the first thing you'll need to do is grasp hold of the navigational instrument. The sextant. The what? That one there, the sextant. It is the most important navigational tool. In fact, you cannot navigate a ship without one. And so do make sure you ask your parents for one for Christmas. Now, as we are already on board a ship, we do not need to calculate our distance from sea level. So we can skip that piece and move directly to finding the horizon. First of all, hold it up to your face. And then, not like that, Murray. Like this. Two hands, one hand on either side. Now, if you look through the sighting scope, yes, you'll be able to see the horizon line and then the horizon in the horizon mirror. But we're inside. Yes, I know that. We'll use this instead. Wonderful. Now, line up the horizon line with the horizon by adjusting the sextant. Yes, sir. Now, we need the Polaris, which, before you ask, is the North Star. So called because no matter where you are in the world, no matter what time of year, it is always in the North. Now, of course, during the day we use the sun, hence why we have these glass shades, so you don't go blinding yourself. Now, look back through. Now, with your left hand, begin to adjust the index arm and bring the Polaris down in the horizon mirror until it rests on the horizon line. Yes? Yes, sir. Splendid. Now, carefully take the reading off of the side. Remember that reading. Mm -hmm. Now that we have the angle of elevation, the next thing we need is the time. Now, of course, regular clocks do not work on board the ship with all the salt air and the listing. So we have chronometers. What time does the chronometer say? Remember that time. Yes, sir. Now that we have the angle of elevation and the time, we can look up both of these in a navy almanac. What? That book there. Oh, it's heavy, sir. Of course it is heavy, midshipman. It has every single listing of the elevation angles and also the times and also the points of latitude. Now, have a look. Found it, sir. Splendid. Now we take those coordinates onto the chart and then it shows us that we are in Portsmouth. Well, of course we're in Portsmouth, sir. We're still tied to the dock. Get out, Murray. You're dismissed.